Hey guys and welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome to the sixth in the series documenting my ownership of my 1997 Porsche 911 Type 993 Carrera S and today we're going to talk about the interior, the different quirks of the interior for the 993 and the changes and modifications that I've made to my 993 to bring it to the standard that it is now. Okay, so first of all, to gain access to the 993 cabin, you have to use the remote control. <clears throat> now, I'm not sure what years these remote came into place. This is a more modern version of the remote control for the 993. This being a 1997 993, the last year of manufacture. Now, I know some 993s were released in 1998, but those vehicles were actually manufactured in 1997 and then were registered later in 1998. Now this key fob provides access to the interior. It unlocks the car and switches the alarm and the immobilizer off. You use the indented button to gain access to the interior and to switch the alarm and immobilizer off. And you use the slightly raised button to lock the vehicle. We'll talk in more detail about the different operations you can perform in addition to locking and unlocking the car with the key fob a little bit later. So first of all let's talk about some of the quirks of the interior. Now the 993 interior design and layout of controls has been well discussed with regards to it being very haphazard in how the controls are laid out. This is a well documented feature of the 993. It's been perceived now as a quaint quirk of the 993 but I'm sure at some stage it was very annoying for the drivers and for owners of the 993 911. You'll notice you've got some of the controls here you've got the light controls here which is sort of out out of the reach of the driver it sort of is in the reach but you've got to move substantially forward to gain access to it and you've got the actual raising and lowering of the lights here. Now when we look at the gauges as with all Porsches Front and foremost, you have the rev counter. Now this is vitally important because obviously if you over rev the engine, you cause damage to the engine. And if you're driving fast, then you need to know the actual revolutions of the engine. On the right hand side, you've got the speedo. Far right hand side, you've got the quartz clock, which is actually very accurate. And here you've got the gauges which cover the oil. You've got the oil pressure, you've got the oil temperature, you've got the oil level. Now this is used when the car is flat with the engine running to assess whether or not the car needs topping up with oil and obviously the fuel gauge. Here you have the adjuster for the clock. A lot of people don't realize, but you click that, then it actually moves the hands round on the clock slowly to begin with. And you keep your finger on that, on the button and it moves faster and faster. So obviously that allows you to adjust the clock. Here you've got the time wipe on the wipers. Over here you've got obviously a reset on the trip counter. And over here you've got the adjustment for the dial cluster backlights. Now, more in the quirks and design of the cabin. You've got the air conditioning system here and it's locked by the steering wheel so the driver cannot see the air conditioning controls. You have to feel it and just hope that you're getting the right button. Obviously you know when you've been using the vehicle for quite some time and you've got used to the controls then you'll know where the controls are and you'll have a good idea where to feel for them but to begin with it must have been an absolute nightmare using the controls within one of these cars when you first bought the vehicle. Over here you have the various different lights, fog lights, heated rear window. Obviously if you've got a soft top then you won't have a heated rear window. Um, fog lights, front and rear fog lights and this is an interesting one here you've got the cigarette lighter. Now why is it interesting? Now some of the Porsche aficionados require that the cigarette lighter has the smoke pointing up and it can be quite a point of discussion if people see interiors of cars and the cigarette lighter has with the cigarette parallel or rather with the cigarette lighter horizontal. The requirement is with the Porsche aficionados that the smoke rises up. So you must have the cigarette lighter at a particular angle. One of the quirks of Porsche aficionados. So here you've got my short shift gear stick. I've talked about this in a previous video which um, linked into the suspension and the actual upgrade to the short shift lever. This is the short shift lever that was imported from America. Obviously a different height actual gear lever. The Cineresque style actual gear knob and the actual underneath the golden rods which which provides the connection to the actual selection shafts which actually change the gears in the gearbox and without the actual as I've said before in the previous video without the rubber coupling. Please relate to the previous video for more detail about this, this um, upgrade. Here you have different functional buttons for the car. 
This one raises and lowers the rear spoiler manually, so you can actually raise it and lower it for cleaning the vehicle. Here you have the rear wiper. Here you have the sunroof. Here you have the hazard warning lights. Here you have the lock and unlock of the central lock-in internally. So if you're inside the vehicle and you want to lock the car, you just have to press that button. And then to unlock, you press the top button. Now this button, it's got a big exclamation mark on there. And when that's when that needs pressing, it's highlights is highlighted in red. Now, what does that do? Well, when you have a warning come up on the cluster gauge or when the car warns you, you have a big red light come up on the gauge, on the cluster gauge. And we'll show you because it's illuminated. Here we go. There. Now, when you have an issue with the car, this warning light comes on. Now that issue could be low fuel. It could be low water in the, in the water reservoirs. When that warning comes on, you'll also get another warning light come on. Now, first of all, you'll get the small warning light and then you get the big warning light. The big warning light is to really tell the driver that something is wrong. And now you can clear that big warning light because obviously if you're driving, that is quite imposing. And you clear that big warning light by pressing this button. It's not going to clear at the moment because we're actually in the ignition stage. We've just got the ignition on the first stage. Moving on to the air conditioning system and controls. Very rudimentary controls. It's not climate control here. You've got air conditioning. You actually adjust the temperature with the left button and you adjust the fan with the right hand knob. You adjust the, you adjust the temperature inside the cabin with the left hand knob and you adjust the fan speed with the right hand knob. You adjust where you would like the air conditioning to be delivered, below or high, using these controls. And obviously this doesn't just cover the air conditioning, it also governs the, the temperature of the cabin, so the, the, um, whether it's warm or cold. Now with regards to the heating and the air conditioning of the cabin, it's quite hit and miss. I say hit and miss because if you have a good car and you have a good air conditioning heating system, then it'll work. If you don't, then it won't and you're gonna have problems all the time. Very fortunate when I bought this car, it has a good heating system and it has good air conditioning. The air conditioning works as the usual way with a, a unit being driven off the main pulley from the crankshaft. The heater, obviously it's not a water-cooled car, so the heater uses heat exchanges straight off the exhaust. So one of the benefits of using the heating system for a 993 and an air-cooled Porsche is that you get direct heat. So as soon as the car is started and the exhaust get warm, which is very quickly, you'll get heat. This is the standard steering wheel that's provided with this car. I believe it was an option to get the later 996 variant three spoke steering wheel. This one didn't have that upgrade and I'm quite pleased they didn't have the upgrade. This is more the classic 993 type steering wheel, design of steering wheel with the four spokes and the airbag in the center with the horn in the center as well. The other version, the free, the free spoke version was an option for the later models of the 993, which I suspect it would have been an option for this car being a 1997 car. And also it was the steering wheel that was implemented and specifically designed for the 996-911 that came after the 993. Looking at the rest of the interior, we have the stereo. This is an upgraded, I believe it was a, a cassette system that was installed to begin with. So this is this was upgraded, it's an upgraded model, the Becca Mexico CD. I'm not sure of the model number. And obviously the usual handbrake, etc. Now you'll note that I've upgraded some of the sections here. It doesn't come standard of aluminium. I've actually upgraded these parts, but I have the original parts so I can put the car back to standard. This is a bit of a, a discussion point with some of the some of the Porsche officiators as well. Many people don't like it, many people do. I can always change it back if I need to. And also, as you will have noticed as well, on the heating and air conditioning controls, I've got some accents that I've put on top of the actual control knobs just to highlight the silver in association with the silver accents here for the handbrake. You'll also notice in this car, there's no cup holders. Porsche didn't provide cup holders in the 993. If you want a cup holder, you've got to install one. Moving on to the ergonomics of the driving position. Now the seat has some adjustment. You can adjust the rear squab of the seat up and down, the back part, and obviously you can adjust the back part of the seat forwards and aft. With regards to the main squab, you can also move that forwards and backwards. In this car, it's not electric, it's manual. With regards to the steering wheel, you've got a fixed steering wheel. So if that doesn't suit you, tough. <laughs> There is no adjustment for the steering wheel fore and aft or up and down. Now, if we look at the pedals, this is a bit of a discussion point on the 993 because the pedal box, meaning that the pedals are hinged from the floor as opposed to the top, takes quite a bit of getting used to to some people while others fall naturally in use. The pedals, as I say, are hinged from the bottom. This gives you uh, a new feel and, and different design in actual pedal usage. 
and is actually preferable to most people. It is preferable to me. But one thing that catches a lot of people out is that the pedals are actually skewed. So they're actually at an angle to the side. Now this is because this car was predominantly designed to be a left-hand drive and not a right-hand drive. So when they did the modifications to make it a right-hand drive, they had to put the pedals slightly to the, to the left-hand side. This means when you get inside the car, you have to do a slight swivel to the left with your hips. Now I've over-exaggerated it there, but you have to do a slight swivel to the left so that your feet align with the pedals. Some people with back problems have issues with this misalignment and it causes them severe back pain and they actually have to sell their car because they just cannot deal with the slight variation in angle. I haven't known it a problem. I noticed it when I first bought the vehicle, when I first started driving the car, but ever since then you just fall naturally to it and it hasn't caused me a problem at all. The cabin is also quite closed in so when you're driving the vehicle you have to get the seat arrangement set up very well, otherwise you'll be uncomfortable. It's, it requires quite substantial amount of fine tuning to be able to get your seating position right for driving. Earlier we were talking about the steering wheel, so let's discuss the controls around the steering wheel. Now here you have the usual things, you have your indicator stalk, left and right indicators. Now here on the right hand side you have your wiper controls, the ability for your different speeds of wiper and also to put it on a timer mode and you pull this towards you and it flashes the headlights. The design of these, in my opinion, is quite inferior. This was a very expensive car at the time and, and they put these plasticky controls on there. Again, another quirk of the 993 and the air-cooled cars. However, if you move across, to the actual window controls. You have the two window controls there, one for the passenger side and one for the driver's side. For On the actual driver's side, you have the, them both. Those are rock solid, as though they're cast of steel themselves. Very durable and really solid. Very unlike those switches to fail. If they do, then they're quite easily obtainable, but they're very durable. The rest of the car is pretty much bulletproof. Very, very solid, very well engineered probably over-engineered. I believe it cost them a substantial amount of money to design and to build these cars. Without an obvious graphic, this is the button that opens up the petrol flap to enable you to put fuel in the car. Again, I've put a knob on that's got silver accents. When I purchased the car, it had the normal black knob, which I still have the original item, and the actual graphic for the fuel had been worn off the button. Now, when I first purchased fuel for this car, it was literally just after I bought it because these cars are quite often stolen. So the, so the garages that sell these vehicles, they keep the fuel very, very low. So if somebody does steal the car, they can't get very far with it. So when I purchased the car, it was very low in fuel. So I had to go circa a mile to the closest petrol station and get some fuel. I remember walking around the car wondering, how am I gonna put fuel in this car? I could not see how to open the fuel flap. But all I had to do was to come to the side and pull the button. Moving on to the aluminium accents that are provided within this car. These are provided because this is the Carrera S. These are standard only for the Carrera S model of the car. You can also purchase them as an additional item and you can purchase them now. Certain companies still provide, although I believe they're hard to get hold of, but you can still buy upgraded versions of these handbrakes with the aluminum accents. And the gear lever as well had an aluminum accent by standard in the top, but obviously I've replaced that by installing the short shift kit. In addition to these aluminum accents for the Carrera S, you also had the silver accents around all of the dials. And first and foremost, up front, in the ref counter, you've got the Carrera S logo, very prominent there. You're never, you're never gonna forget that you're driving a Carrera S. Now you may have noticed these items. You may have noticed these items in the car. Usually they confuse quite a few people. They're an item that was provided as part of the alarm system for the car. They're the ultrasonics that they manage access or preventing access to the interior of the car. Now what a lot of people don't realize, just getting the key fob again. And this is where I was going to discuss this, um, the additional functionality that you have with the key fob that's provided with this car, this style of key fob. When you lock the car, if you leave anything open, if you leave the side windows open or the sunroof open to let air into the vehicle, if it's quite a warm day, like today, for example, then you can lock the car and then within a certain amount of seconds, I believe it's within five to 10 seconds of the car being locked and the indicators having finished flashing to denote that the car is locked, you can then depress the unlock key and what it'll do is it will switch off 
the ultrasonics in the car, but it will not unlock the car. This enables you to leave windows open and to let the car breathe with the car still being locked. Now this is the approach that I take when I store my car because I leave the windows open, which is quite common to let the internal air breathe. So in the winter period, obviously you get a lot of damp and a lot of cold. You don't want that moisture to stay in the interior of the car. So I leave the window slightly open to let the interior of the car breathe. And so that the alarm isn't screaming all the time, I switch off the ultrasonics by using that approach that I've just detailed. With regards to blocking out the sun and sun visors, you have quite substantial sun visors available. And even the driver gets a mirror which is quite rare nowadays, including, of course, the passenger. In addition to ergonomics within the vehicle for the passenger and for the driver, you also have certain storage compartments. As with most sports cars, you don't get much in the, in the way of storage, but you do get some, and it's quite substantial, relatively speaking, considering this was a high performance sports car in its day. So the storage predominantly that's provided is in the actual door cards. You have near the speaker, a substantial storage area, and you have the flap that you open there, which provides storage within the compartment of the actual door card. In addition, you also have the glove box, and here, you have standard size glove box for general bits and pieces. Now this glove box has to be fitted very well and has to be adjusted very well because it can rattle substantially. So it's key in a 911, especially a lowered 911 like this one, lowered to RS height plus 10 mil. It's important that this is well adjusted so it pulls in tightly and it, so, that, so that it doesn't rattle when you're driving with harsher suspension. Moving on to the seats, this is, this is provided with the well desired hard back seats. As you can see here, it's got a rock hard back, very supportive, so the sports hard back seats. These cost a substantial amount if you, want to put, if you want to add them in after you've purchased the vehicle. In the back, this car was classed as a two plus two. As you can see, they're not really proper seats. In effect, they're a cutout in the rear of the car with a squab added in, a very thin squab as well to both sides to provide access for to either very very small people or children. Most of the time though these rear seats are used for storage so you can push the button here on the top of the backrest and that provides access to be able to bring the seat forward so that you can actually put use this as additional storage you can put your shopping or other bits and pieces that you've purchased or need to carry to and fro on this actual back parcel shelf. Although, to be honest, I found it to be quite a hindrance trying to get whatever you're trying to store on here in and out of the actual car in itself because obviously you don't have a hatchback and you don't have rear doors to provide access. Moving on to the lights within the interior of the car, you don't actually have a physical switch, but what you do have is the actual light itself, which has a switch inbuilt in the actual light. So to turn it on and turn it off, you actually rock the light so turn it off there to put it onto its normal mode so that when you open the car door the light turns on and when you close the car door the light turns off you leave it in the central position and to leave it so the lights always switched on you move it to the far right hand position now with the light in the far right hand position yes the light will stay on when you close the doors but it still has a timer so it's not gonna it's not gonna burn your battery down in addition you also have capability to put a, a suit or a shirt so you can hang clothing items using the hooks in the back of the car. Probably not that practical, but they provide it anyway. At some point, you're gonna to wanna to get out of the car. The way you exit the vehicle is you pull the lever on the side underneath the armrest. That provides access to leave the vehicle. So that provides the ability to open up the door. So that's the interior of my 993S with all its quirks foibles and slight upgrades thank you for watching guys and as always please subscribe and if you like my videos then please click a like below and please add some comments let me know below what you think of the interior of the car let me know if you think it should have been redesigned in a different way or if there's different approaches that could have been applied and just in general let me know your thoughts of the interior if you think it's a classic interior that will last the test of time or if you think that the more modern versions that are provided within the 996 and the 997 are preferable to the old style classic interior. Thank you for watching guys and 
We'll see you in the next video, which will be number seven of my series documenting my ownership of my 1997 993S. My sense says I'm a gorilla. <laughs>